Greetings Jelly Speens and welcome back to another episode of Monday Madness, the Monday show where I talk about anything and everything and today we are doing another part, I think we're on part three of the OC story that you guys are voting on and sending me suggestions for and just in general telling me what to do and then I'm creating a story and then we do the whole thing all over again. So once again at the end of this video you guys will be voting, I'll give you some options and you guys can give me suggestions or whatever you want, chuck it in the comments down below and We'll create the rest of this story. I have no idea where it's going. I didn't even know what the characters were called. I created them and you guys did the rest. So here we go with part, I think it is three, part three of an OC's story. Now, so far we have got names and we've got the main character, the guy that my Patreons voted for and their background, their description, what they're like and their appearance and things like this. And you guys gave him a name. His name is Darrow and he is an assassin. He was sent to kill the youngest prince, so the third son of a king, and he attempted to do so by jumping into the prince's carriage. There was a bit of a meet cute where he landed on the prince's lap and then things started to get a bit strange. So this prince, who you guys named Erasmus, was perfectly cool, calm and casual at an assassin jumping into his carriage. We haven't dived into why that is yet. I know why, I have made a decision <laughs> and it'll probably come up yeah, it'll come up at some point, don't you guys worry. In the meantime, where did we leave off last time? Well, <laughs> the assassin Darrow had attempted to kill the prince. However, he had been distracted by the fact that the prince was seemingly unfazed by this assassin appearing in his carriage. And then, as you guys voted for, something happened outside. A noise, a kerfuffle in the streets. And this distracted the assassin and the prince. They both looked out the windows trying to see what was going on. The assassin Darrow got too distracted by this and the prince tried to snap him back to attention saying, you need to hide, they're coming to the carriage they're going to find you, they're going to kill you, all this stuff. But the assassin wasn't listening, too busy trying to rack his brains to think of a plan. Desperate to try and get the assassin's attention, the prince Erasmus said, look at me when I'm talking to you. This inadvertently caused a flashback frozen moment of horror for the assassin Darrow, who was transported way back in his mind to another moment where someone had screamed the exact same words in his face. What happened next was Prince Erasmus managed to convince the assassin to hide. He hid him in the under compartment underneath his seat and then sat there nonchalantly hiding the blades that were still digging into the back of his chair when the guards opened the doors and they informed the prince that there had been assassination attempts on both of his brothers and the king and that his father the king is now dead. I'm now going to read to you some of the prompts that I'm going to be using from the ones people sent to me in the comments and in DMs and stuff like this. So there were a few very similar to this so I've gone with a general no touchy slash stop touching that, don't touch my things, don't touch that because there was a lot of different versions of no touchy, so we're using that one. A sneaky cameo from another character I have created. I don't know how I'm going to work that one in because I don't know what's going to happen, but I will very happily include that at some point. We also had a lot of requests for hurt comfort or sick, looking after them, that kind of thing. And we also had someone say the worst hangover in the world, so I'm going to combine all of those. So those are the suggestions that I've taken out of you guys this week. So we've got hurt comfort slash worst hangover in the world. We've got cameos from other characters I've created and we've got a no touchy don't touch that kind of idea. We also had the vote over on Patreon so anyone who is following me on Patreon got to vote and they have voted for a special item that our assassin carries and I gave them different options and the one that won the vote is it is a memento from a time where he absolutely fucked up really badly. So I'm thinking that might go in hand in hand with the no touchy, don't touch it kind of vibe. So we'll see what happens with that. Could be something that he dropped as he was getting bundled into the under seat of the prince's chair. Yeah, I think that might be where we go with that one. That sounds quite fun. We also had the vote at the end of last video voting for one of three options, which I'll give you at the end of every video, the three options that are vague and you guys can go into more detail in the comments of what you would like to see. The one that won the day was that the princes, not necessarily the third one, but definitely the oldest prince and his brother, they are going to go and speak to the assassins that have been caught. All right, let's dive into part three of the OC story of the assassin Darrow and uh, his soon eventually maybe to be enemies to lovers person, Prince Erasmus. In the carriage, Prince Erasmus is sitting there dumbstruck, horrified. He can't say anything. He's still covering up the daggers that are sticking in the back of the chair. He has enough sense of thought to do that, but he can't quite comprehend. His father is dead. The guards check all around the carriage, they look over him, check that he's all right, and then they back away and leave him to his thoughts, saying he can come out if he wants, but it's not a pretty sight. 
The prince lets the door bang shut. Dish, 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 until eventually the door settles, closed. And he listens to the noise from the crowd outside. Some people are screaming and crying. There's some running feet, but everything starts to slowly quieten down. And he can hear the voices of his two older brothers. And you can hear them as they have stepped out of their carriages and they're shouting orders to the guards, particularly the older one, the first in line to the throne, who is now the king, is shouting orders at the guards and telling them what to do with their father's body. Don't let people touch it, don't let them see him, put him back in the carriage, take him away, put him away, take him away. And they hear the sound of a carriage rolling away, getting as far out of view as possible so that no one can see the dead body of the deceased king. The voices continue and Erasmus can hear his two brothers storming down the street and he can hear the sounds of chains and clanks of metal and he hears as his two brothers approach the group of three assassins and they start laying into them. They're demanding answers. What are you doing here? Who sent you? What is this? Is this an act of war? Are you working alone? Who are you working for? All of these questions. And as the assassins start to answer, it becomes clear very quickly that while these are people of the underworld who may have heard of each other in passing, they were not working together. This was a solo mission for all of them. Every single one of the assassins claims to have been sent alone, having no knowledge of the others whatsoever. And when the middle prince and the now king are demanding answers about why, they don't have any. Why did we do it? for the money, or because I was told to, I owed some guy a favour, every answer is different from the three of the assassins. And none of them were sent by the same person. One of them was sent by an organisation who just hands out jobs. One of them picked up the job on a notice board that asked for someone of his calibre and skill. One of them was sent by their criminal boss specifically, but they refused to name the name of their boss, saying that it doesn't matter, they don't have any vendetta against the royal family, it will just have been a job. None of them have any idea why this could have happened. Why today? Why now? Why all of them? But then again, it wasn't all of them. And the princes, well, prince and new king, start to come back to their senses just a little bit. They calm down from the shouting and they look towards their youngest brother's carriage and they ask the guards and the prince hears them asking and they say, no, there was no one in there. No attempt was made on the youngest prince's life. And then the two older brothers fall very quiet. And there's a whispering and a mumbling between the two of them that no one else can catch. Prince Erasmus, still sitting shocked in his carriage, leans forward to try to listen, but he can't hear their words. He's heard that tone before, though. That muttering, that mumbling that his two older brothers have always had between themselves and never him. He was a little bit too much younger than them. They never really clicked as brothers. But now it's turned sinister. And he remembers that in the last few days, the last week even, he has heard those tones a lot. Anytime he has walked in on them having a hushed conversation, anytime they've leaned over at the dinner table, anytime he has caught them speaking alone. And it's usually felt like it was about him. Always directed at him, the furtive glances, the nodding, the occasional pointing, occasionally hearing his own name. Something's not right, but he has no idea what. Nothing more is said, at least not loudly. The guards go back to their business, the assassins are dragged off, put in one of the brothers' carriages and kept together under lock and key. The carriages start to trundle off again in formation, following behind the one with their dead father in it further up down the road. The two princes, well, the prince and the now king, both sit in one of the brothers' carriages, probably the older prince, the now king's carriage. The assassins all bundled into the middle one and taken prisoner. And as the convoy starts and sets off again, the wheels, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, thundering, the horse hooves, the crowds are no longer cheering. There is weeping and sighing and crying and just a stillness to the air as they continue through this town and out back onto the wilds and the paths taking them through the countryside and away from civilization. So they've set off again, they're on their journey, they're back on the road. And Darrow is still hidden underneath the prince's seat. After a few moments, 
Prince Erasmus remembers this and comes to his senses. Perhaps his arm slips and he catches the dagger, not impaling himself, he just catches the dagger and realises, oh god, yes, <laughs> this man's still here. And so he gets up and he carefully pulls up the cushions and drags open this sort of big box crater thing. And he offers the assassin a hand and pulls him out. Darrow takes it warily and immediately drops it very fast as he jumps back out and sits opposite the prince on the other seat. And the two men stare at each other. It is Prince Erasmus who speaks first. He breaks the silence by fixing the assassin with a hard stare. And he asks, were you working alone as well? You knew nothing of the attempts on my brother's and my father's life. Darrow shrugs, still not quite with it, trying to shake the visions and memories from his face. He rubs his eyes and blinks, looking up at Prince Erasmus across from him. No, I had no idea. Just me, working alone. <sighs> Supposed to be no fucking mistakes. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But you don't have to believe me. Of course you don't. Why would you? And I'm now royally fucked. He says this, looking at the curtained windows either side of them, hearing the do 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 of horse hooves. There is absolutely no way the assassin can escape this carriage now, not without being noticed. His job just got infinitely harder. Prince Erasmus chooses to believe him. He nods slowly, drawing in a long breath and then letting it out again. His father is dead. His older brother is the king. But, really, he thinks, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's going to matter. Not very long, anyway. Not for me. A small smile creeps across his face, and the assassin finally regains enough sense of the present to stare at Prince Erasmus, completely confused. Hang on a minute! Did you organise the hit on your father? Fuck, it was you, wasn't it? And that's why you weren't surprised. You knew it was coming. How are you so cocksure, though? I could have killed you. I was going to. Still things fucked up. You had no guarantees. You had no guarantees at all, but there you sat, fucking blasé as anything. What's wrong with you? You're some sort of psycho. As he said this, the assassin couldn't help grinning himself. It was quite a good plan, and someone throwing caution to the winds not caring whether they lived or died? He had a strange sort of respect for that. A strange sort of mirroring respect, as uh, he felt pretty much the same himself these days. At this accusation, Prince Erasmus was horrified. He stared at the assassin with wide eyes. You do realise you just accused a member of the royal family of attempting to assassinate the king? And no. Gosh, if I was going to kill any of them, there are much better ways to do it than out in public like this, where, well, so many things can go wrong, including the things sitting opposite me, it seems. No, if I was going to kill my father or my brothers, I would poison their morning mead, hardly awake enough to even pay attention at that time in the morning. Erasmus fixed the assassin with another hard stare. No, I didn't hire you nor anyone else. I have not made any attempts on anyone's life. Yet. He finished with the sort of dry chuckle that had no humour to it. There was something going on in the back of the prince's mind that he wasn't sharing. A joke that no one but he was in on. A joke that was bringing a strange smile to his face and a faraway expression to those eyes. Darrow leaned closer, hands on his knees, staring intently at the prince, immediately attempting to get out of this fixing stare from the assassin. The prince shifted in his seat. He gave Darrow an interesting look, remembering what had just happened, and trying not to think too much about his father and his brothers, he asked, What happened back there? I said something, and you were... well, all of a sudden, no longer with us. For a moment. Darrow sat back at once, folding his arms, the wall immediately back up around him as he snapped back. That's nothing to do with you. Don't matter anyway, it's done. I'm back or whatever. It's fine. 
it's all fucking fine. Except for, you know, being trapped in a fucking carriage with his royal fucking highness who I still haven't managed to fucking kill yet. Oh yes, why haven't you finished the job? Uh, here. And the prince gives a almighty tug to one of the blades, pulling it out, admiring it because it is rather fancy, and handing it over to the assassin. He then reaches behind him to tug and heave and pull out the second one, holding it out so that Dara can take that back as well. So why don't you? I'm unarmed. What am I going to do? What's anyone going to do? The assassin couldn't help but respond to that immediately. See, there you go again! No one's ever begged me to kill him off before. Well, you got a death wish or something. The prince met the assassin's gaze, holding it. He blinked once. Yes. And slowly, the realisation dawned upon Darrow why the prince had not cared when an assassin quite literally landed in his lap and attempted to take his life. Neither of them said anything. They let the silence keep stretching between them. But then the carriage rolled over a particularly juddery patch of mud, and something was dislodged from the shadows of the floor. It caught the prince's eye, and he bent at once to pick it up. And this is going to be the memento item that Darrow has kept as a memento of a time when he royally fucked up. I'm going to keep calling it the item through the rest of this video and you guys down in the comments and over on Instagram and everything, you guys can decide what it is. Give me suggestions. What do you want it to be? I want it to be something that an assassin can keep on his person, so nothing massive. It's not a big musical instrument or a huge notebook, nothing like that. Small item. Think smaller than your fist, that kind of thing. Uh, something that isn't going to be too clunky or heavy, not going to make a lot of noise. Remember, assassin boy be assassinating. So something small. So... This is not me giving you ideas, but pocket watch sized. Go from there. And it can be a fantasy thing, you can create something completely, it can be a real thing. Remember that we're sort of mixing fantasy with a little bit of the real here. There are mobile phones in this universe, I haven't mentioned them for a while, but there were in the first video. So there's like mobile phones and magic, but everyone still dresses fairly like fantasy-esque. It's like a sort of combination of modern-ish with a fantasy twinge. So it can be technological, whatever you fancy. What is this item? So let me know your ideas in the comments down below and for now we'll just call it the item. So the prince is holding it, Prince Erasmus is holding this item and looking at it. Immediately, Darrow goes to snatch it. And this is where we'll get the phrase that people are asking for, the no touchy. He will immediately lean forwards and shout, don't touch that! And he'll go to grab it. The prince on reflex pulls back a little bit. But seeing the desperation in the assassin's face, he looks back at the item, then back up to the assassin. And in a moment of understanding, he holds it out. And Darrow picks the item out of the prince's hand. And there'll be a little cliche moment where his fingertips brush the prince's and their hands meet just a little bit. A spark goes through both of them and that flash of familiar memory hits again. They recognise each other's eyes. And at this point, Darrow still has his face mask up. Don't forget that. Still got the face mask up. He takes back the item and cradles it in his hands, staring down at it. And now it's the prince's turn to ask questions. Glad to be off the topic they had just steered into, he nudges it aside and turns the tables back on the assassin. He asks if it's something special. He asks why the assassin carries it. And the only answer he gets back is the vague answer of some things you just gotta hold on to even if they weigh you down. Sometimes that's all you deserve. A shit memory from a shit person in a shit time and... fucking up. And you gotta carry it. Literally. So I do. That feels like a lot of information for an assassin to tell a complete stranger. The prince is digging now, he's trying to get at those familiar eyes. He's convinced that somehow if he can dig with the assassin they can work out who they are to each other. He knows the assassin's holding things back, he is too. And the assassin has managed to dig into a very deep and secret part of his personal self and he's determined to do the same back. However, the tables get flipped once again as the assassin quite blasely says to him, Spilling your secrets to a stranger is one thing. 
Telling your secrets to a stranger what don't plan on being around long enough to tell no one else. Don't feel like such a gamble, does it? Ha! <laughs> Touché! Go on then. Tell me something else. Tell me something people don't get to know about you. Tell me your name. Who are you? And at this point, he's digging partly for himself and partly because he has this strange feeling that the assassin has no one really to confide in at all. And even if it is with his last few moments, hours, days, whatever it ends up being, he'd quite like to matter to someone. And it's at this point that the assassin will fuck it. Give him his name. Holding the item in one hand, he stretches out the other towards the prince. Darrow. Call me Darrow. And at this, he will pull down the mask, hiding his face. And this is where I'm going to leave the story for today, because you guys have options. So, I'm going to give you three options about where the story can go from here. You guys vote down in the comments, let me know which one you want. Anyone who's on my Patreon, I'll give you something else to vote on. And everyone who is on Instagram and TikTok and stuff, give me ideas there as well. I'll be asking you for more prompts as the days go on too. And if you have any other ideas, chuck them down in the comments. And anything that we haven't used today is going to roll over into the next one. So the hangover from hell, crossovers, this kind of thing. The enemies to lovers, it's it's coming. It's, it's going to be slow, but it's happening, guys. So anything else you want, let me know in the comments down below. And let's get on to the three options for you to vote on for next time. Let's do it. And as always, yes, you can vote for all of them if you want all of them, I guess. So option number one is going to be that when Darrow pulls down his mask, we see why he uses it. And it's not just because he's an assassin. This is why he uses it all the time. It is something nasty, either a burn or a brand or a scar, something like that. Something really messed up on his face or his skin, something that he wants to hide and keep concealed, not just because he's an assassin, but because it does doesn't look very nice either. Option number two is that when Darrow pulls down his mask revealing his whole face, the prince immediately recognises him and remembers where he finds him familiar from. Option number three is that after Darrow has pulled down his mask and shown his true face, as a mark of sort of respect and trust between the two of them and this strange bond that they've got now, the prince will reveal something private and secret to Darrow as well. Maybe something physical about his person, something that's wrong with him, something, a scar, a mark, something of a similar ilk, he will show it to Darrow as well. So those are your three options. Let me know in the comments down below which one you want. Number one, Darrow is hiding something on his face that's not very nice. Number two, by showing his face, the prince recognised him and knows where he knows him from. Option three, the prince will reveal something to Darrow as well. Or secret option four, all of the above, I guess. Uh, let me know anything else you'd like me to include in the story down in the comments below. Anything else you'd like to see it do happen? Any character requests for the crossover that has to happen now because you guys have asked for it? Which of my other characters would you like me to see throw into this. Let me know in the comments down below. Alright, see you in another week, my wonderful jelly spoons. I might update this sooner if I can. I have a lot of work this week though, and there is a fanfic that I'm currently writing with a friend that needs to be updated. So check out my AO3 page. There is a brand new fanfic called Puscat and Princess, if you want to go and read that one. It's up to about 11 chapters right now, I think. So yeah, check that one out if you like Has Been Hotel. It's angsty, as always. Be good to yourselves. Don't forget to hydrate. I love you all. Bye-bye.